Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by... Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Housewarmings, the outdoor living and fireplace experts. They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Waiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet. Gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Now, obviously, as you look around, this doesn't look like Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen because, well, really, it is for this week. Right. But we looked on VRBO. We're now in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, just right down the road from Biloxi, which is just right down the road from New Orleans. And we've been feasting on seafood all week long. How much terrible. weight do you think we've gained? I have lost weight, but I think you've gained weight. Really? Yeah, no, I don't That's know. That's not very friendly. I don't think, you've lost weight. I don't think you've gained weight. Oysters are light. Yeah, we've been eating a lot of oysters, a lot of great seafood. Our friend, the Hignites, are down from Kentucky visiting. They were right down the way. Where are you guys staying at? Alabama? Gulf Shores, Alabama? And they are here tonight to have dinner with us. And we thank uh, Mandy and Nate Smith. This is their VRBO place. It's absolutely wonderful. That's the way we like to travel. Nice. You can find your place, pick it out. And tonight we're going to have a variety of things that's absolutely delicious. Uh, over the next little bit, you're going to see us visit some restaurants. Yummy food. How about that catfish? Yummy. Got a lot of sneaky surprises for you, uh, seafood-wise. We're going to New Orleans. We're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. We're catching crabs. we got to eat those. All right. <laughs> now, here's what we're going to do. We're boiling water right now. Look what we got. This is, this is how they're supposed to look. All right. We're going to take... Here's the best way that we've found to do a lot of seafood boiling it. Take a little bit of celery, leaves and all, pop that in. Take a little bit of onion, a little bit of lemon. And, and when, you, when they have the heads on, that adds a little stocky flavor to it. It just it got that fresh, wonderful flavor. And as soon as it starts to boil, we're gonna drop these guys in. You don't wanna do this too long. Probably five minutes max. When they start to turn pink, take them out, let them set from it, they'll continue to cook. But you don't wanna overdo your shrimp till it becomes rubbery. When it starts to get pink, it's time to get it out. Now we're gonna take a little Zatarain's New Orleans tradition since 1889. Wow. Now we're gonna dump a little bit of this out in here. Now a lot of times they say leave the bag in it, but we're just gonna use as much as we need. And we're gonna pop a bay leaf in there as well. Now tonight, what are you making? You're making some kind of oyster. Give me one more of those. You're making some kind of oyster dip here in a minute. And it's oyster from, artichoke right. dip. Right, and it's actually a cookbook that Mandy gave us that owns the house. 
there's a lot of local recipes. Anywhere you travel, you'll find, if you immerse yourself in the local culture, you can find cookbooks, local cookbooks, that people, and what's, what's the lady's name that made this recipe here? That particular recipe. It says Mrs. William Smallwood. Mrs. William Smallwood. E. Smallwood. Oyster artichoke dip too. Now, you can do this at home. You can buy your oysters already shucked. You can find places back in Kentucky where you can find oysters. If you can't find them, that's just sad. That's yeah, just is. wrong. But anyhow, we're going to start with, the shrimp. with our shrimp. We're starting to get a good boil going over here. We're going to drop these guys in. And again, that's some big old shrimp. And you got cocktail sauce. I you bought it. Louisiana. Yeah, didn't you? I bought some fresh stuff. Now, we went to a local seafood store. We asked everybody where the place was to buy the good stuff. And they, everybody I talked to said quality seafood. So we went right down the way to Biloxi, which is just right down the road. And by golly, they were right. Now, if you can't catch it, you can just go right down the road. And they got everything. And it's right off the boat fresh. They have fish. They have wonderful seafood. They have poultry. Anything you might need, they've got it. I'm going to let them go. Once, the, once it gets a good boil going, probably about five minutes. Our shrimp are pink. Yay, that's and perfect. And they're ready to roll, baby. I'll tell you what, since you have two hands, okay. I'm gonna stand over here and let you pour into there. All right, look right here. Tell me that is not delicious. Now, you know what? We like to mess around and pop our own oysters open, and there's a little bit of work involved here. You gotta pop the heads off it. Try one of those guys and tell me if that is not absolutely delicious. It's not frozen. It's never been right off the boat, right from the seafood shop to our pot. You crack them open. They are just absolutely wonderful. Now the great thing about shrimp heads is any, any kind of waste that you have, we'll put those in our crab traps and set those out. And guess what? You get some other good seafood coming your way. They're probably burning their fingers off. Now as they're burning their fingers <laughs> off and preparing to eat shrimp, Nikki, I want you to get started on right. this absolutely wonderful oyster artichoke right. dip. Nikki, you're getting busy over here. A whole stick of butter. It's healthy. A stick of butter. And we got us some fresh green onions. Look around and find the freshest local stuff you can find. Oh my, spring's right around the corner. Good Foods is going to have their wonderful fresh vegetables. You know exactly where they come from. You look around on the shelves, you can see who the actual farmer is and where they're grown in Kentucky. I like that. All right, that called for a bunch of green onions, right. so that depends on what you like. What you like. And you want mostly the green, right? Right. More net? I'd say a little bit more. How's that? Green onions. Now we just got to saute those down for a little bit. All right, I'll work on that. Now our green onions are nice and brown. All right, the recipe calls for half a pound of fresh mushrooms. All right. You just keep getting better and better here. Mm -hmm. Do those for a little bit. And then we're going to also add yeah. two pints of oysters in there. You're going to cook it all down. All right. You ready for the oysters, too? I'm ready. That's going to be a good dip. And it says cook them till the oysters curl. Till they curl. Till they curl. I'd already be curled if I was in that pan. Mm. The Hig Knights are picking through their shrimp, and they have happy looks on their faces. <laughs> <laughs> now, these are moving along nicely. We're going to let those go. What is the next step, Nikki? Okay, we're gonna blend it all up and we're gonna add some artichokes that I've drained. And we're gonna see what we get and add some sherry and you get the consistency you like for a dip. Mm, yummy, 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 How's yummy, yummy. All right, now, if you haven't tried oysters, now one of the things I really, really would beg you to do, you may have tried things in your life at one particular time where you thought they were good or bad or ugly or whatever. Try them again. Your taste change as you get older. You owe it to yourself to give it a shot. If you don't like it, well, let somebody else have it. What do you think? Want to put them all in or just wait? Let's go ahead and put some. Let's go ahead and put your smarter chokes in. We'll just work on it slowly. Get it rolling. Add just a tiny bit of cooking sherry here. All right, you know what, Nikki? I'm dying to try this. Guys, dig in. We put a little bit of cheese on top of that, some green onion. Oh, it's yummy. 
Oh, I like that. Mm. It's a oh, good yeah. hot dip. Fresh oysters, fresh mushrooms, artichokes. This is one of the recipes down here in it that they make a mm. lot. Mm. I'll give I you like a thumbs it. up on that, Mrs. Farmer. I never give me had some it. knuckle, baby love. I never had it. That's good. You missed me there. I missed it, dude. <laughs> I thought he said thumbs up and knuckle. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> How much do you like it, Mrs. Farmer? Mm. You seem to be wearing it. <laughs> Let me help you with your little boo boo thing. Nice, good job. <laughs> now, we've got all kinds of stuff planned down here. We're going to New Orleans. We got somebody cooking us some good local dishes down there. But tonight, while we're down here, everybody's got hot crawfish. Yeah. Already cooked. Quality seafood has some of the best pre cooked. They just go scoop them out of this big red boat. They loaded us up. We're going to pinch out about a pound of these and we're going to make crawfish pie. You all in? Yummy. Let's make some crawfish pie. And then Sounds later good. on, we're going to finish up with some redfish. Ooh, yum. Baked. Easy. Easy, easy recipe. All right, let's get started. I'm going to get my big skillet out on the crawfish pie. Let's get the crawfish out. As you can see, we've gathered everybody together. We've pulled Darren off the audio. Kelly should be over here, but she's holding the camera right now. We're pulling tails on these uh, crayfish, and we're uh, going to try to get about a pound. The problem is doing this without accidentally. Oh no, that's happened. Pretty good. You sure, what just happened. I might have to have that. Happen. I got hand to mouth disease. Mm, that's once good. we get about a pound of these, we're going to start dog. Shamey, shamey. Shamey. I'm calling somebody. So we're popping them out here, one by one. All right, look at here. Got our shells cracked. Yummy, yummy. Wonderful. It was hard. Was it not hard to not eat those? But we managed. You ate some. I saw you. I was hungry. Okay, that's all right. How's everybody doing so okay so far? We had uh, shrimp, fresh shrimp. We had the dip. We had a couple of crawdads, couldn't help it. And now, how many people in this room would like to have some crawfish pie? I got a uh, pie shell here. We browned it just a little bit in the oven. We've got our oven preset on 350. Now we're gonna make a, Nikki, if you will, I'm gonna make a roux to get this thing started. And I'm sure most of you know what that is, but if you don't, it's basically flour and butter. So we're gonna get our butter going, and then we're gonna add our flour. And we're gonna thicken that up, and go about a half a cup, and we're gonna make that our, that's gonna be our thickening agent. And we're gonna get this to a nice, kind of a caramel color. This is your basic roux? This is just a basic roux. And you wanna stir that up. You don't wanna burn it, but you wanna have that nice taste in there. All right, now we've got some wonderful little things cut up over here. Our roux is done and ready to go. Nikki, if you will, grab me some onions. Now we're gonna put these in here for six or seven minutes until they get nice and tender. Bring me some celery in there, if you will. Doesn't that smell good? It does. Now tell me we're not off to a good start here. We're not off to a good start here. This is farmer? It doesn't, it looks good. It smells good. All right, now that right there, smell. Smells good. Smell Higgs. Mmm, that smells Yummy. good over there. We're gonna cook these down a little bit, let them get nice and tender. Now they're gonna bake in the oven for about 45 minutes as well. I put a yellow pepper in there because I just wanted the color. There's, there's, there's kind of a lot of red once we get the tomatoes in here, so I wanted the, the color to stand out with the yellow. Flavor's the same. I find that sometimes they're a little milder too. The green ones give me a little, you know what I mean? You're getting old. <laughs> I mean, Yeah, I've been young. told many, many times here lately, since you posted my birthday, Kelly, that's the best party you ever had. That was the best party I ever he had. He said it was the best you know party what? you ever had. Uh, usually, she can't keep a secret, you know. And so it's it's my birthday party, and, and I'm like, you had to plan it a week ahead of time, because you knew, you absolutely it knew. Was a, we planned this a month ago. Yeah, but they can, they never can get one over on me. So what they did is plan it on a Sunday, like almost a week prior, and I had, I had no clue. We're doing a music show, and... Um, you showed up late for your own party. I showed up like Kelly, who's behind the camera right now, was working the camera over there. And she didn't, she usually can't keep a very good secret. We're excited. And everybody was like, you know, I, I, uh, don't you think we should get on home? 
I said, Kelly, I'm starving. Should we stop by somewhere and get a snack? She said, no. I knew something was wrong right there because Kelly never turns down. She always wants a snack. Yeah. <laughs> But it didn't tip me off. Next thing I know, I pull in the driveway. It's just a Taco Bell. Then you'd have gone. just Taco The next thing you know, I pull in the driveway and I'm like, there's a black balloon on the mailbox. And I still didn't get it. How yeah. about all the cars? Well, once I saw 8,000 cars of all my assorted best friends in the world, there they were, wishing me a happy birthday. And you with, cried like a baby. With a cake full of candles. I mean, full of candles. This is almost like a pot pie, in a way. Well, I've never had it. it's a crawfish pie. Okay. And it's a very yummy dish. I've had it down here before, years and years and years ago. Now, I'm gonna come in with some tomatoes. I'll we'll put about a half a cup of tomatoes in there. Stir those in. Now, there are different seasonings that different people like. I like this in about everything. Now, they're not a sponsor, but I absolutely love it. And it's called Tony Chasseries, I think. I like that. Tony, <laughs> but it's good, whatever it is. It's got a lot of... Cajun seasonings. I don't want to put good. too much cayenne in here because that has just, just the right amount of salt and garlic and everything you need. And I'm just going to put a tad of that and a little bit more cayenne because, and I'm going to go light on that because we already had some seasoning. I'm going to go about an eighth a teaspoon on that. I'm going to bring those onions in at this point. The green onions. Ready for green onions? Yep. About a quarter cup of those. All over? Yep. Now let's drop the crawfish in. And I'm gonna put just a tad of salt. Now, smell that. That smells good. Mm -hmm. Smell it over there, Let's guys. eat it with a spoon. All right, we're gonna mix it all up. And if you will. Put it in the pie. You hold it over here. Switch this into the pan right here. And we're gonna bake this at 350 for about 45 minutes. Now you can also put these in tiny little cupcake type dishes and have individual little things for folks, which is good too. But, and when we're done, We'll sprinkle a little parsley on top of that. And that's it? That's it. Put it in the oven, 45 minutes. Now, while we're doing that, let's go ahead and start preparing our fish. And what we'll do is we'll put it in there in the last 12, 15 minutes, and then we'll serve the fish. With, with the pie. The brr, brr, Yummy, because we brr. haven't eaten enough. We need more food. Let's set this stuff out of the way. All right, now we're going to time, we're going to try to time our fish to come out the same time as our crawfish pie. Okay. You guys having fun? Yes. Oh, you're a good audience. Thank you. They haven't eaten everything. They left a little bit for us. They did. Doc, wait, he kind of ate quite a bit of the dish. He was licking the dish That's over right. there earlier. This is simple, and I like simple. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this redfish. We've got some fairly small redfish fillets. So this is probably only going to take 15 or 20 minutes. We're going to lay these in here. Now what we're going to do is take about a teaspoon of paprika. We're going to let you taste the fish in this. Spread that around. Get that nice and even in here. And some onions. We're gonna come back with some salt and pepper. Hand me that lemon over there. We're gonna take and put a generous amount and get all that out in here. And this, this is not complicated, but the flavor is gonna pop. Then we're gonna come back with some melted butter, which has no calories. Mm, wow. That looks good. Oh, it is. Now we're gonna set this. Pop this right in the oven. We're already cooking. With We're our gonna pie. give that about 20 minutes. That pie's looking good, by the way. Let that go. Come back in a few minutes. We're dinner. gonna have dinner. Got a frog in my throat. I've been working all day in the hot, hot sun. I can't hardly wait for night to come It's so hot you can't sleep, it's hotter than far You ought to hear that old Kentucky River bullfrog holler We keeping you away? No, I'll go ahead and you ain't by me. By the time you get done, the fish be asleep. Kentucky River bullfrog bigger than a groundhog, call a lack of dog barking on a tree. Catch you with your bare hand, throw him in a frying pan. Took a river bullfrog, mighty good to eat. <laughs> we 
Jim, me and my uncle in the car by the light. Paddle down the river in the pale moonlight. Catch a mess of bullfrog, take her home to mom. We eat frog legs when the morning comes. Kentucky River bullfrog bigger than a groundhog. Holler like a coon dog barking on a tree. Catch him with your bare hand, throw him in the frying pan. Took a river bullfrog, mighty good to eat. Well, me and my uncle in a little John boat. We got so many frogs that the boat won't float. Cleaned them all and we took them in, and you ought to see my pappy grin. Kentucky River bullfrog bigger than a groundhog. Holler like a coon dog barking on a tree. Catch him with your bar and throw him in the frying pan. Took a river bullfrog, mighty good to eat. We took about all the frog we was gonna take. Uncle reach for a frog, come up with a snake. He flung that snake down in the floor and hit him in the head in my boat oar. Kentucky River bullfrog bigger than a groundhog. Holler like a coon dog barking on a tree. Catch him with your bare hand, throw him in the frying pan. Took a river bullfrog, mighty good to eat. <laughs> Here's where we're at. Our fish is done and flaky. Look, you know when it flakes wow. like that, it's done. We're gonna go ahead and try it. Then we're gonna pack all the rest of us outside. Well, that's good. You taste the Your fish. Your pie's good too. Mm -hmm. You just dig right in here. Mm. Should we share with our friends? Mm. You guys want to just watch mm. us eat? Let's watch us eat. I think they should probably have some. You want to share? Yeah, we should probably share. How about Darren and Kelly? Should we let them yeah, eat? Yeah, probably have them have some too. Right. But I tell you what. Let's eat this first. I could get used to this fresh seafood. Your fish is good. Fresh vegetables. And you know, you taste the fish here. You don't try to hide it too much. It's fresh. All it is is paprika, butter, lemon. You don't want some of Go outside and have a party. Let's pack it all outside. Take everything outside and enjoy this nice weather. Now everybody's here, the Hig Nights from Kentucky. So you know what? Let's dig in. We got the ocean behind us. We got Frog sounds, animal sounds. It's cold in Kentucky right now. I like those flavors nice together with crawfish. Mm -hmm. I like your pie. The pebbles. That pie is good. Did you make dessert? Dessert? Where's dessert? Um, no dessert. Right here. Oh, yeah, cheers. Right cheers here. to apple, cheers. Apple juice. That's very nice. <laughs> cheers to our, to our trip to the Gulf. If you can't can't find crawfish, you know what? I have got out and seen them in the creeks in Kentucky. Believe it or not, they're out and about. Can't find them. You can put some shrimp in there. You can find shrimp anywhere. That's delicious. It really is. I thought flavors wonderful together. Mm -hmm. And the fish, you can taste the fish. Don't forget to check our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. See where we're going, what we're doing. Also, TimFarmer'sCountryKitchen.com. If you've missed a few shows, get on there, check them out. All our recipes are on there. And you know what? These will be shortly too. So it's all about good times. Good friends. Good eat. Good job. Good job. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's cook the rest mm, of the We'll fish. see you next week on Tim Barber's Country Kitchen. Mm. <laughs> Special thanks to... Chrisman Mill Vineyards, Good Foods Market and Cafe, Kentucky Beer Cheese, Polecat Custom Smokers, and Weisenberger Mill. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight.
Salt Rocks, the flavor of life.